So we're live on Married and Young and Married and Young Single. Okay. How are you today? How was your day? It was, it's a good day, actually. Yeah. It was great and productive. I got some rest today. And yourself? was wonderful. I, uh, I planned my day out. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I tried to do as best as I could and I was able to get a lot done. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I was able to yeah. knock a lot of, get a lot of stuff today. Um, okay, so we are streaming on our Married and Young and Married and Young Safety Single page. Um, so it kind of sounds like there's some feedback too. Um, on my end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. You still hear it? Yeah. But it'd probably be perfectly fine once we transition over. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Stop that. But it okay. Okay, you guys. So we're live, streaming live on all of our pages. Good evening, everyone. My name is Natasha Miller. And welcome to POU Week. Okay, so. We just completed the Break the Cycle Challenge all last week, Monday through Friday, February 4th through the 8th. We went through five days of intense healing and delivering, okay? How many of you guys were blessed by last week's challenge? If you were, I would like you guys to um, share how you were blessed in the chat box, all right? My husband and I had such um, a good time spending with you guys and hearing all of the testimonies and um, just all of the revelations that you guys received. We're still receiving emails. I'm still receiving, you know, the end. It just makes our heart so happy to know that our challenge really did impact your life. And instead of just, instead of just uh, closing the Facebook group after the challenge, we thought that it would be a great uh, opportunity for us to come before you guys uh, for this whole week and share with you all what my husband and I, um, what we give ourselves to on a daily basis. So you guys, after the challenge, we invited you all to be a part of the One University. And the One University is, um, it is a program that you're able to be a part to where we walk you through uh, seven stages of healing uh, to where you hit on how to fall in love with God how to heal from your past, how to figure out what your purpose is, how to prepare for marriage. We cover all these different areas. And I know that many of you, after completing of the challenge, you realize that, man, I really cannot walk this deliverance out uh, by myself. I need community. I need resources. I need information. I need to learn how to pray. I need to learn how to hear the voice of God. So this week, we wanted to give you guys a sneak peek into what has to offer. Um, so this evening we have Prophetess Keith Prophetess Keith Jesus with us. Um, she is an amazing woman of God. Many of you guys are already speaking in the chat room. They're saying hello, Prophetess Keith. Many of you guys have been impacted by her ministry. Um, and what is even more amazing is that she is one of our guest instructors within the world. She literally taught a whole course of prayer and prophecy, you guys. And listen. I was there for the whole tape. It is power pack, okay? So we wanted to have her come on and just impart into you guys, like literally, like you guys are getting the cream de la cream this evening by being able to sit at her feet and hear what God has imparted into her in regards to how to accurately 
hear the voice of God, guys. So I want you guys to take out your notepads and your pen and your heart and just really, uh, just really focus in on the time of, uh, of teaching. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just. Oh, you know what? I'm getting all excited to record. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. So welcome again to T O U Week. All right. So it's Monday, February 11th, and we have the amazing prophetess Keisha Cephas with us. And tonight, she's going to be teaching on how to hear the voice of God. So Prophetess Keisha is not just a minister of the gospel and a prophetic voice uh, to the nations in the earth, but she is a personal friend to Jamal and I, okay? It's been such um, a beautiful uh, journey to be able to just walk alongside her um, as we all accomplish purpose. And me personally, seeing her blossom and grow just in her authority, um, and just in, in her identity and who she is, it's been absolutely wonderful. She is a wife to an amazing husband. Um, she has two beautiful, two beautiful children and yeah. amazing grandchildren. And I love watching her Instagram stories about them and everything. That's super fun. Um, then also she is an author, right? And the name yeah. of the book is, is a that through. right? Pray that through, yes. Pray that through. Um, and she is a conference speaker, you guys. Many of you guys, she's a mentor where she has created all types of resources for uh, the average man and woman of God to be able to learn how to walk in their authority in regards to prayer, right? Yes. So we are in ministry because this woman has literally given her life to prayer, given her life to uh, training and helping the body of Christ uh, grow stronger in that area. So, um, yeah, you guys get ready to receive and it's all for you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pastor Natasha, as well as Jamal, Pastor Jamal, for uh, even allowing me and trusting me with the people that God has given you to be a good steward over it. And I always say job well done. So it always an honor to be able to serve God's people in the place of prayer and intercession. And so tonight my assignment was to uh, teach you on how to hear the the voice of God. So it is going to be basic foundation. My teaching style is I believe in giving out definitions, reflection points, and then you'll hear scripture. I also tell every student, and I see plenty of my students on here today, is to take out your Bible, your journal, and a pen and have an open heart. And then I'll be go ahead and start with the actual teaching. This teaching should last us about 30 to 35 minutes. And then Pastor Natasha will get back on. She'll close us out. And then I think we're going to do Q&A and then you all will be set to go. So you should be on here no more than 845, no longer than nine o'clock. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. And then I want you to write down the word here, H-E-A-R, here. And then I would define it from Miriam's dictionary. Okay. The Webster dictionary. And it simply means to perceive or to perceive or become aware of by ear to listen to with attention, to gain knowledge by hearing, to heed, to attend, to become aware of sound, a certain, to catch on, to discover, find out, get onto, to learn, to realize, and to see. The word here is defined to perceive or become aware of by ear, to listen to with attention, to gain knowledge by hearing, to heed, to attend, to become aware of, a certain, to catch on to, to discover, to find out, to get on to, to learn, to realize, and to see, all right? Then I want you to go to 1 Chronicles 16, chapter 16, verse 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. I always tell people, if you want to hear the voice of God, you have to pursue him. And your life must be built on biblical principles. And you must know that you are a child of God, that you belong to God, and that he is your father. He is not to be compared to any voice in the earth, except for the ones that he used to speak. 
Now, we always tend to just lump God up in one boat and say that God can speak to us only through our dreams or only through a vision. But God speaks to us by way of a preach word, by way of his scripture, by way of worship. He speaks to us by way of time that we spend in prayer. He speaks to us by knowing who Jesus is so we can hear the voice of God. He speaks to us by way of the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through circumstances and situations. So you cannot just put him in a bowl and say that he only speaks to you one way. I used to do that. I used to say to God, I know you speak to me by way of dreams because I am a dream of dreams. And I know I've been dreaming since the age of five that I am aware of. So every time that I close my eyes, I would say, I know that God is getting ready to speak to me since I have come into the knowledge of truth back in 2000. But then that dream realm was my crutch. It was my comfort zone. I always expected him to speak that way. And I didn't allow him to speak to me any other way. And so what I did was I put God in a box. And then once my dreams got cut off, because I put him in this box, then I had to learn how to hear God in everything and in everybody that wanted to speak on his behalf. So I couldn't just say he can only speak to me through dreams when he's still speaking to me through the preach word. I couldn't tell him that you can only speak to me by my dreams when I know that you actually speak to me by way of prayers. Because when you answer my prayer, there is a reward because it is called answers. And so when I talk to you, I can't expect you to talk back to me the same way. Therefore, I had to change up the way that I allow God to speak to me. So it's not just in dreams and visions anymore. It wasn't just in the sensing and the knowing anymore. It wasn't just in my situations or my circumstances anymore. I was able to hear from him even through people, even through prophecy and through the preach word. Every time I go into the church and I hear a message, it is God speaking through the vessel that he has before him. So you cannot say that God only speaks to you one way, but you have to be one who pursues God, who seeks God, who requires of God. God, inquires of God, one who chases God because you're building a relationship with the Father. If you're constantly saying that you cannot hear from God, what you're telling God is that he is not your father and that the devil is your father because that's the only way that you're not going to be able to hear the truth of his word. So I want you to go to 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11, and we're going to talk about the seek part of hearing God, how you're going to pursue him, and then how you learn to hear from him, okay? And so it says, seek the Lord and his strength yearn for and seek his face and be in his presence continually. You must be in the presence of God continually. The word presence means you must be in the face of God continually. You cannot afford to not read your Bible, not worship, not praise, not have a prayer life and think that you are going to hear the word of God. You cannot just attend church and hear the word of God and think that you're going to be able to be a doer of the word of God. You have to sit there and hear with the tent to say that God you are speaking to me and though it may be a message with a title you are still speaking to me there is something in this message that you want me to hear because once again whatever you hear you will be tested by and you will be tried by so this is why you got to make sure that you pursue God that you seek his face that you spend time in his presence that you learn how to worship that you learn how to pray that you learn how to meditate that you learn how to ponder that you chase him and even if you have a dream it's still your responsibility not to chase a man for the interpretation, but it is your responsibility to pursue God first that you may get the interpretation of what he's saying. Because many books will give you the interpretation of the dream or the vision, but it's their revelation. Revelation only comes to that which was once dark to you, that God begins to reveal it by way of the light of his word. So before you share the dream with anybody, you are to pursue God because you don't want to be in spiritual gossip. He didn't tell you to share what he showed you first first until you pursued him to get the answer. Your job is to ask God, what are you saying in this? What are you doing in this? What are you going to, what am I going to gain in this moment? And so when you're pursuing God and seeking God, you got to think about his face. His face represents his presence. Write that down. His face represents his presence. All right. It is the Hebrew word that represents the presence of God. And you must think of it literally. This is God who I pursue, who I see that I 
I may see your that I may seek your face that I may hear from you. So even when you in your time of prayer, you just don't enter into the room of prayer with your list and then you walk back out. No, you stay there and you ponder and you meditate. And sometimes you can't even start off the conversation with your list. You go in and you sit still. You quiet your day, your bills, your career, your education, what's going on with your spouse, what's going on with your money, you being single, all of these things, you must quiet yourself in that place of prayer so that way you can hear if God wants to start the conversation first because he always has an opinion about you and he also has something to say. Then you can present your list. Then you can go into your prayer directives. And when you come out of his presence, when you come from seeking his face, you shall have an assurance that God heard you and that he has already answered you, that you're just waiting for the manifestation of what he has promised you. So you cannot even become disturbed because you thought, oh, I didn't hear God in that moment. The moment is, is that I have faith enough in God that when I'm in the presence of God, he has heard me. And so I want you to go ahead and go to I want you to write down these three points that I have for you. You can hear the voice of God through. Put this down and then I'm going to give you some points and then I'm going to slow down because sometimes I preach, teach, and then you might even hear me prophesy. All right. So I'm going to slow down. All right. So one way you can hear God is through his word, which is reading the Bible, through the preach word, which I said, through dreams and vision, through prayer and intercession, in worship through a prophecy, which is the agent of God's prophets or the prophesier that is able to get the word of God for your life because they are speaking from the heart of God and not their own heart to you. Also through situations and circumstances. Here's a reflection point. I want you to catch it and you write it down and then you can always catch the replay to get the notes, okay? Hearing God's voice is something we all might long for because we all should be a part of him. But did you not know that many of them, many people say that it's hard to do because we have too many cares of this world. So we become bogged down with the cares of this world instead of casting our cares upon God, for it is he that careth for us. What we do is we carry the load or the burden and then we become so bogged down that we cannot hear what God is saying at that moment about a situation or circumstance. In fact, God wants you to hear his voice every single day. This is why you have to see him in all things. You have to see him every single day. You have to be able to teach your ear how to hear. If your mouth is always running, you are not learning anything because you cannot listen with a mouth that's always going. So you even have to teach your mouth how to be quiet so that way you can hear what God is saying. This is why you can't be as talkative even in prayer because how can you hear what God is saying if you are constantly running the conversation? So you even have to teach your own mouth how to be quiet so you can hear what God is saying, not just in prayer, but with the preach word, a situation, a circumstance, even through a commercial, God can still speak to you. Even through a movie, God can speak to you. Even through your children and even through the people that you think that you don't like or like you, God can still speak to them. So you got to teach your he ear how to hear, but you also need discernment as well, because you need to be able to judge between that which is true and false, that which is is holy and profane and that which is not of God or is of God. It is your job to discern between the good and the evil. So you have to know what is speaking to you. First put down, you must be a sheep. You must be a son. You must be a child of God to be able to hear the voice of God unless he is prophesying through you as an agent, as one of his sheep in the earth to an unbeliever that who will believe at that moment that you were sent by God and they'll fall to their knees and say, that you are of God. But when it comes to you, who's supposed to be in God, there's no reason for you to keep saying each and every day that you don't hear God. If you're not hearing God, you're not spending time with God. You need to ponder on scripture. Someone put up for me scripture in the chat. You must be a sheep and you must know your father's voice. My sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice. They would not follow according to John chapter 10, verse 27. Please write that down. Then I want you to write down John chapter 8, verse 47, and I'm coming out of the Amplified version. I told you John 10, 27, the sheep that I, that are mine, they hear my voice. 
they listen to my voice and I know them and I also know their voice. John 8, 47 says, whoever is of God listens to God. Those who belong to God hear his words, which is of God. This is the reason that you do not listen to those words to me because you do not belong to God or you are not of God or in harmony with God. So when you don't hear his voice, what you're saying is one, you don't believe in truth because you can't hear it. Then two, you must not be of him. And I refuse to believe that is true in this moment. Then I want you to go to John eight. And then I want you to look at John verses 42 through 46. All right. John eight, 42 verse 46. And it says, when we can't hear God's voice, or welcome his voice, or choose to disobey the truth of his voice or the or, of his word. The Bible tells us in John 8, verses 42 through 46, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me and respect me and welcome me gladly. For I proceed, came forth from God and out of his very presence. Now, if Jesus is in the presence of God and the three are one, who are you who says that you are the sheep of his pasture and you don't spend no time in his presence? How are you gonna hear from God, get your instructions from God, your guidance from God, and simply have your peace in God, your joy in God, your strength in God, and you don't spend time with God. That's like saying that you don't take a bath every single day. You will stink. You will become a, a stench into his nostril. And the only thing you will be dictated by is by your flesh. And we know no good thing dwells in the flesh. And if you are in your flesh, you can't tell me that you don't have a carnal mind. When we know that a carnal, a carnal mind is an enmity against God, it is a gross sin of God. You are to have the mind of God, the mind of Christ. For if you be in Christ, you should have his mind and everything about you should be transformed and converted into his image. For you can't tell me that you can't hear the voice of God if you are in his image and been made in his likeness. He created you. So the moment that you open up your mouth and even pose a question to the father, he hears you because he's not hearing him, hearing you. He's hearing himself talk back to him. Him. This is why he says, man shall not eat bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is why you need the word. So that way, when you're talking back to your father, you're putting them back in remembrance of his word, not because he needs to be reminded of anything, but you treasure up, you guard, you protect that which he has already spoken to you. And then you pose the question. His job is to answer. This is why you say, therefore, this is the confidence that I have in God, that what Whatsoever I ask of him, according to his word, he hears me and he answers me. This is the kind of faith that you have in your God. Because if you can't hear him, what you're telling him is that you don't trust that he will answer you or he will speak to you. You should not be misled. You should not be wandering. Neither shall you grope in the dark. If you have a prophetic word, if you have a preach word, if you've been praying, if you've been in Bible study, if you've been reading your word, meditating on your word, med pondering on the word of God. Surely the Holy Ghost himself is always on standby to answer your question for you. So you have to think about who am I entertaining? What is I'm doing? Who's vying for my attention? What voice is leading me away from God where I can't even determine if God is really speaking to me because he's always speaking. He speaks in a still small voice. He's not in the fire. He's not in the wind. He's not in the tornado. The father is always always speaking, but you cannot put them in a box and neither should you continue to say that you cannot hear. You got to teach your ear to hear, especially if we're going to be an intercessor for God or an agent in the earth for God. We need to be able to give an answer because he spoke it to us because he teaches through us. And so you have to make sure that you teach your ear to hear and keep your mouth closed so you can hear what God is saying to you. It says, Jesus said to them, if you, if God were your father, you would love me and you would respect me and welcome me gladly for our proceeding came forth from God out of his very presence. I did not even come on my own authority or my own accord as self-appointed, but he sent me. 43, why do you misunderstand what I'm saying to you on daily basis? It is because you are unable to hear what I'm saying. You cannot bear to listen to my message. Your ears are shut to my teachings. 44, you are like your father, the devil, and we refuse to be like the devil, right? 
and it is your will to practice the lust and gratify the desires which are characteristics of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth. So that means in order for you to hear him, you got to also believe the truth of his word, all right? Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him. For he is a liar himself and the father of lies of all that is false. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Do not trust me. Do not rely on me or adhere to me. 46, who of you convicts me of wrongdoing or finds me guilty of sin? Then if I speak true, why do you not believe, trust me or rely on and adhere to me or my teachings or the truth of my word? So put down your life must be built on biblical principles. How will you know if God is speaking to you or the devil is speaking to you if you don't know the word of God please put that down you must know the word your bible must be your life must be built on biblical principles how will you know that the enemy is talking to you if you don't know when God is talking to you how can you counterattack what the enemy is saying to you if you don't have any word in your arsenal what weapons do you have if you do not have his word the truth of his word because listen the devil likes to talk to he talks to us in our mind and then he gets in our heart and then it start acting out in our members and whatever is in the heart the mouth is also going to speak it as well and if you don't buy into the truth of God's word, you will always be bound to a lie which comes from Satan, the devil, our opponent, our contender. He's always speaking. And if the devil is speaking and you do know the truth of the word, then you can counterattack that joker by what God has said to you. So you can tell that devil, no, God said this to me. No, God, you promised me. And then from there, you put that joker where he belongs, which is under your foot, and you make him a footstool. You make him come up out of your life. You come up out of my members, out of my body, out of my mind, out of my spirit, out of my emotions. You're not going to have control of my heart. And so when something is going on in that soul, you have to tell God to make sure, hey, God, put the truth of your word in my heart. Let the word be in my heart that I will not sin against you. So you want to teach your ear to hear by hearing the word of God, but you got to pursue God. You got to chase God. You need to seek God. You need scriptures. You need to worship. You need to learn how to pray, but don't think you just going to always hear God's voice the way you think you should hear God's voice, especially those of us who love to chase prophecy. Could it be that sometimes we don't get a prophetic word because we're looking for it through an actual person and God saying to you, I've been speaking to you this whole entire time from Genesis to Revelation. Did not I say that I know your life from the end until its beginning? Did not I tell you that my voice even roars and thunders upon the water did not I say I can speak to you even in a night vision or a dream so you can't just always look for a prophetic word when I've been trying to speak to you this whole entire time how can you have faith in my agent or my creation and you don't have faith in the creator the one that created you and them so you have to get to a place where you learn how to pursue God seek God chase God ask God questions and see will he not answer you I also want you to put down for the number two is also, you hear God by way of the Bible. You hear God by the way of his Bible, the word itself. Reflection point number two, catch it. One way to be well acquainted with God is to hear his voice by spending time in his word. This year, God has challenged me. At the top of your day, I want you to read a New Testament. I'm sorry, Old Testament. At the bottom of your day, you read the uh, New Testament. So I started out with Isaiah and Matthew. I finished Matthew because Isaiah has 66 uh, chapters in it. So every day I am challenging myself to start my day with the word and to end my day with the word and in the middle of my day to ponder on what I've read because I don't want my mouth to sin against God and I don't want to offend him in any kind of way. So I know if I have a big future, he gives me a thing for my season. It tells me, Keisha, you're coming into expansion and great exposure, which talks about the theme of my season, which comes from Malachi chapter three, verses 10 through 12. 
then I have to re be reminded what God has promised me. So when something looks opposite of what he said to me, I can go back and say, but God, you told me to prove you in this, to try you in this, to test you in this and see, will you not open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I do not have room enough to receive it. You told me you will rebuke the devourer for my sake on every end that I don't have to, that I don't have to worry about anything. Then you told me that all nations will look upon me and call me blessed and a delightsome land. So when I come under attack, I'm not concerned about what the devil is doing in that moment. I just need the wisdom of God on how to get through it. So my mouth will not repeat what the enemy is doing to me, but my mouth will begin to say what God said about me. And because I know the truth of his word, that enemy will have to flee because I'm going to submit myself to God, submit my way to what he said to me and obey him, that the enemy will have to flee out of every area of my life because I choose to submit to God and resist the devil that he may be put on a run in every area of my life. So if you don't read your Bible, if you don't have no word inside of you, you can't counterattack what the enemy is doing and you'll be one who gropes in the night who do not know which direction you go in there. When you read this Bible, God gives you vision. He enlightens your eyes of your understanding. He even unstops your ears so you can hear in the spirit. Then he begins to break your heart for the things that break his heart. Then he comes for the enemies within your soul because he don't want it to get in the way of what your future looks like in that moment. Then what you begin to do is expand on the word of God. You get this knowledge and you have wisdom beyond your years. And what you'll find yourself doing is being more of a lover of God than being consumed with the devil is doing to you. Because if you think about everything what the enemy is saying to you, you have made the enemy your idol, the devil, a contender, an imposter had just became your God because that's who you ponder on the words the most. But you should treasure up what God is saying to you. You got to treasure up what you meditate on because if you get it in your heart, it is going to come out of your mouth. And if it come out of your mouth, it will dictate your actions. So you have to make sure that you read your Bible. You can't go a day without reading your Bible. Why do you think so many of us in witchcraft or in cult-like behaviors? Because we don't read this word and allow God to deal with our flesh. So what we do is allow the enemy to control our deeds and our actions and control our mouth. And before we know it, we're more of an enemy to ourselves than what the devil is actually doing to us. So you have to know, what did God say about this? He has something to say about your singlehood. He has something to say about your finances, your career, your education, your gift, your ministry. It doesn't matter. This book is filled with revelation from the beginning to the end. There is something in there for you. So how can you say you want to hear him and you don't want to spend time with him? You can't say you want to hear God's voice and you don't meditate on the word day and night. You can't say you want to get married and you can't say that you're looking for the right husband. You can't say that you're pursuing the right wife. How would you know if they're right if God said this is Jezebel? This one has a controlling spirit. This one is abusive. This one would abuse you physically. This one will abuse you mentally. This one will rob you. This one will rape you. This one will molest you. This one will keep you bound. This one will take you back to your past. How would you know if you don't know God's word? All right. So look at, I want you to go back and look at John 1, John chapter 1. And then I want you to look at verses 1 through 3. And I pray to God that you're getting some out and I'm not going too fast. All right. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. I know we all coming in, you know. I want the one university. This one university is going to challenge your soul. I know you want a mate. But do you want God more than you want that mate? Or did you make marriage an idol because God is not going to contend for your heart, sugar? And one thing you want to make sure is that you shift your paradigm, the way you think, the way you see, the way you perceive, and even how you receive. If you can't make God number one, you will have a failed marriage. So you want to make sure that you put first thing first, first person first. He needs to be the center of your attention, the center of your focus. 
focus, the center of your marriage, the center of your career, the center of your ministry, the center of your friendship, the center, the center, the center. Nothing should be vying for your attention more than God himself. You want to make sure he's first. Before you start pursuing anything, pursue him. Before you chase after anything, chase him. You can't say that you a husband to be and then when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord and you don't know how to pursue God. You don't know how to see God. You shouldn't want no man or no woman to be your wife or husband who cannot seek God and chase God. And then when you are courting, you don't even hear God in them jokers. You better make sure that you are pursuing God so you can know his voice. So when that person come on the scene, you will know what's real and what's the counterfeit sugar. You won't have any more time to waste. You better get your members in check and you better kill that burning fire that's in your private parts and you tell God for you I live for you I die is it you that I live move and have my being and I refuse to be one who allows marriage be to become an idol in my heart so you tell that devil I am not going to rush anything my job is to pursue the father my job is to chase the father my job is to love the father my job is to hear the father and my job is to obey the father my job is to meditate my job is to ponder my job is to go all the way with him and if it can't be him i don't want it and if he's not in it i don't want it if he's not in the environment i don't want it so you got to know how to hear his voice so you will know when the counterfeit comes on the scene i know this is the one university but this thing teaches you how to have a relationship with the father this is not singles or christian dot mingles or christian singles dot mingle or black love white love whatever this is this is about you pursuing God and building a relationship with the father in a healthy way before you start getting into these relationships. Marriage is not a joke. It is a ministry. And I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have no word in you, take it from me, sugar. When, when something shows up on the scene called life, called trouble, called trials, called tribulation, you're going to see that you need the word of God planted in your heart because the voice should not be the first thing that come out of your mouth because you in a hard season your job is to get on your face and seek the father get the answer get wisdom and see how to come out of it not all oh, this is not going my way i thought marriage was gonna be all sugar and cream around the roses we go smell them no honey it's gonna be a day when you're gonna be tried and it's gonna be a day when you're gonna be tempted and if you don't have god i'm telling you you're gonna have a failed marriage before six months or a year come you need jesus in the center of that because God is not going to allow your husband or, husband or your wife to come before him. He is a jealous God. He says, my name is jealous and I have no, I will not have you serve no other God. Your job is to serve me, love me. Then you put your spouse in the second place, your children in third place, then your ministry. But you don't put God last and then when you get in trouble, you think you need to hear the voice from him then because you in trouble. No, every day you pursue him. Every day you listen for him every day you obey him every day you submit to him how you gonna be a submitted wife or a submitted husband and you don't know how to submit to god so you got to make sure that you know how to hear the voice of god so when your spouse look at you they can say i know that was god speaking to you not your flesh speaking to them they heard the spirit of the living god come out of your mouth and in your actions so when something comes up you can win them by way of your conduct because you can't win them by way of your carnality all right, John 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that he has brought into being. Put, you can't say that you know God and don't know his Word. His word and him are one. All right. The Bible declares itself. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Put John chapter one, which is what I gave you. And then I want you to look at 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 through 17. Are you getting anything so far? Your focus will be John one and one. And then I want you to put 2 Timothy 
three, 16 through 17. Those who know me, I love for the people to chat back. So that way you can put the notes in for me. So that way those who come back and do the re replay, they can also see your notes, okay? Important about scripture. Here we go. Every scripture of God is breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction. Put that down. Highlight for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline and obedience and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will and thought purpose and action. Then I want you to highlight 17 so that the man of God, the agent of God, a vessel of God may be complete and proficient, well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work that God has called them into. So one, the word is God breathed. Two, it's profitable for instructions. So you need the word. It is for reproof and conviction of sin. All right for correction of error and discipline in your obedience. It also is for training you in righteousness, which is in holy living, in conformity to God's will, thought, and purpose, and action. Can't say that you are like God and you look like hell. 17, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work in the earth. Here's your reflection point. You may hear people say that the Bible is just a book written with, with words only, but this word has been tested and has been tried and it's been proven. Then I want you to write and you can trust it. <laughs> you can trust his word because God is not a liar. Neither is he the son of man that has to repent. If he say anything in this Bible and anything to you by way of his word in this Bible, you can believe it and you can trust in it and you can rely on it. And I want you to write down, he will never disappoint you in his word. Neither will he bring you to shame. He may convict you, but he will not condemn you and even if you make a mistake you sin against God he's so good to us that he says that he his word brings about correction so when you repent he remembers your sin no more and when you ask and cry out for deliverance that's you saying that's that awakening inside of you saying hey I need your help and guess what he becomes a helper to you a deliverer to you a healer to you so whatever you are in need of it's about way of this word this is why you can't skip it you can't afford not to be a Christian who don't know the word of God. All right. How can you say you Christ like and you don't know the word? Got it. Here's another point on how to hear the word of God or to hear the voice of God. But you got to ask yourself, why do you want to hear it? Right. Why do you want to hear his voice? So I want you to put up for me. Check your motives. Check your motives. Reflection point. Why do you want to hear God's voice? That may sound like a silly question, but motives are important in everything we do. The Bible says this about God's word, for the word of God is living and active. Go to Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4 verses 12 through 13. You need to know, what's your motive? Just to tell people you heard God. I used to hear that in the early stages of me becoming, knowing that I am a prophet and I used to be like, oh, I heard God say this, and I heard God tell me this, and I dreamed about this, and God started chastening me about releasing his secrets and just doing it because you're looking for affirmation and confirmation. So I had to make sure that my identity was secured in him and that what I was hearing from him, from him, that he can trust me with it. I wanted to be like Abraham, that when the father was getting ready to do anything, and I believe that is in Genesis chapter 17, Shall I hide this from my friend Abraham with giving me the opportunity to at least hear him and he trusts me with the information that I may hear what he's saying and then make intercession for that particular event or for that person, but not to go and brag and boast because I heard from God and I want to tell everybody I saw that comment or I heard God say that God told me that two months ago or God told me that six months ago. No, you're, that's pride. That's also insecurity. And it also stems from rejection that was opened up to some type of hurt or abandonment or fatherlessness because you want to get the approval of men and then you don't 
don't have the approval of heaven. So you want to get to the point where you are hearing the voice of God, that you have the right motives before God and that you don't share anything that he has given you about anybody that he has not told you to talk about. I tell people all the time, 80% what I see by way of dreams and visions or even here, 80% of that is an intercession for me and prayer. It's about 20% that God allows me to release. And if God is not telling me to say it, Keisha L. Cephas will not open her mouth. And I don't put on a show for anybody for the sake to put on a show just to say, I gave a prophetic word. No, 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 no. I refuse to offend God by lying, saying that God told me to say something and he didn't tell me. I, you will not catch me saying, thus says the Lord, if I didn't know that the Lord said. Now, I might say I sense or I feel or this is me, but I'll never say this is God if I did not hear the Lord say it. So you got to make sure your motives are pure, not just for you when you're trying to hear the word for yourself. But what about when you're trying to hear the word for somebody else for a global event? Do you do it because you do you want to hear because you want to boast and you want to brag? That is pride. And we know that pride is very destructive. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit would embarrass you. It'll make you fall on your face. So you got to make sure that when you're trying to hear the voice of God beyond you for somebody else, you want the heart of God to accompany it. So don't get the voice and you don't have his heart. You want to make sure that if you're going to prophesy it, if you're going to preach it, if you're going to teach it, if you're going to disciple somebody in it, mentor somebody in it, meet somebody in it, witness in it, you better make sure that you have the heart of the Father because this is not about you. It is still about the kingdom of God. This is not about whether or not how accurate you are. This is about the heart of God for a people. And you need to know that this is all about kingdom assignments and not the kingdom of darkness, but the kingdom of heaven. So if you're going to be his mouthpiece and you want to hear and you better get the motives in check. This is not about you to brag and boast and tell people, I saw that in a dream six months ago. Girl, God told me about him such and such about eight days ago. Oh, I knew that was coming. I, I saw that months ago. No. What did you do with God show you? Did you pray? Did you intercede? Did you watch? Did you warn? Did you correct? Did you reprove? Did you judge it? Did you warn? What did you do? Did you get the set of instructions on how to move forward with that word? Or did you just see it and you hold it so that way if you see it come to pass, then you can brag and boast and say that you saw it and God showed it to you? How dare you see something about your brother and sister that God even told you to share, but because you just want to hold it for accuracy to see whether or not it come to pass, you hold that word and you leave them in bondage and you put their life at stake. You got to hear God when he says release the word, but you also got to hold hear him when he says hold the word so that way you'll know how to pray and that way you'll know how to release it. Sometimes I like my uh, spiritual father say, you got to know when to say or when to pray. And I'm like, you better know it. Because if you say something that God didn't tell you to say yet, then what you do is send people into unnecessary warfare. Yeah. So don't just get it because, oh, I want to, I want to get, I want to be prophetic. And we all are prophetic and prophesy just to say, oh, I prophesy. I saw that. I dreamed that. I sensed that. I know that. Pride. Stop it. All right. Reflection point. Let's go. Hebrew um, supporting scripture. Hebrews 4. Verses 12 through 13. This is going to check your motives. Keep it in check. For the word that God speak is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul and immortal spirit and joints and marrow and at the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of our heart. 13, and not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Go back to where it's says, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of our heart. Ask God, check my motives. I want to hear you. I did hear you, but check my motives. What will I do with that that I heard? All right. Here's another point. One way to hear from God is through prayer, through prayer. Another point through prayer. And I'm not going to, hey, Kimberly Beasley, I see you. One way is through prayer. 
I'm not going to assume that everybody knows what prayer is. So I'm going to define it and then we'll build on it. All right. What is prayer? Reflection point. Catch it. Prayer is dialogue between God and God and his people, his covenant people, especially those who wants to partner up with him. It's a conversation between you and him. All right. Or more people if you're in a corporate environment. Dialogue is essential in prayer, and it is extremely important and necessary to know that God has an opinion about everything we face, and he has an answer to every question we pose. He is a God who is a solution to every problem. There's not one problem that God does not have a solution for. He is not mute. He is not dumb. He is not ignorant, and he is not silent, all right? He is a father. So the moment that you pose questions, even in prayer, God hears you and he will answer you. Go to John 10 verses three through five. John 10 verses three through five. John 10 verses three through five. And we're almost done. All right. Perfect. Thank you for putting that up for me. All right. Tell us that the sheep listens to the voice of the Lord and heed it. Remember, I talked about hearing one of the definitions for hearing was what heed it. And he calls his sheep by name and brings and lead them out. When he has brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Five, they will never on any account follow a stranger, but but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger or recognize their call. When you are an intercessor, when you build in a place of prayer during your personal time or the time that you join up with God in regards to intercession, you know the voice of God. You pray the will of God, the heart of God, because you are acquainted with his voice and he knows your voice. All right. Then I want you to go to John 10 verse 14. John 10 verse 14. John 10 verse 14. And I want you to highlight when I tell you to highlight this. Say, I am the good shepherd. Highlight good shepherd. And I know and recognize my own. And my own know and recognize me. He is a good shepherd. He is a good father. We were born to commune with God. We were born to communicate with the father. He loves when we come into his presence. He loves when we worship him. He loves when we bow down to him. And even in our most broken state, he still knows how to amend us and bring us back together again without allowing us to be so fragmented. He loves when we come into that place of prayer, that secluded place, that private place, the place that I love and that you should love. Of, is that place where you say, God, I come to you naked and unashamed. You know me. In the book of Genesis, you said that you looked upon me in my dirtiest form, which is the dust of the earth, and you breathed into my nostrils and you made me a living soul. So even when I'm dirty before you, you still got your breath of life in me and you draw me out of that dirty place, that broken place, that wounded place, that painful place. And in your presence, I become everything that you have ordained me to be because I'm acquainted with your voice and I can hear you say, I am not wounded. I'm not abandoned. I'm not fatherless. I'm not what happened to me. I'm not but the product of a mother and a father who got together, who was outside of wedlock. I am who you said that I am and I can be all that you said that I can be and I can have everything that you said that I can have. I'm not my past and I'm not going to become stagnant in my present and neither will I forfeit my future. I know who I am in you. I am a child of God. I'm not fatherless. I'm not rejected. I'm not abandoned. I'm not my sin of the past nor the second that I just did it. I am a child of God. I'm not an orphan. I'm not a slave. I don't have to beg you for anything. I come and make my request be made known unto you and you grant it unto me according to your word because all that I pray is what I pray from by way of what I read in my word. And then I want you to put down two in prayer. Though you might be in a, a conversation or conversing with God, that does not mean that you can manipulate God with your prayer. In prayer, it's not the time that you think that you can be manipulative because you can't move him by way of your tears because you think that your tears is going to manipulate God to do something that you want him to do to satisfy or gratify your flesh. That's not how that thing works. He only is moved by his word, his will, his purpose for your life. So you have to align yourself with the word of God. 
God, the principles of God, and get you some morals and some ethics, and you begin to say what God said about you. You come in full agreement with the Father, but you can't manipulate him by way of your tears. And let me hit this. If you got unforgiveness in your heart, nothing for you is moving until you learn how to forgive. You need to forgive your mama, your daddy, your siblings, your peers. It doesn't matter. Your pastor, your old pastor, old leaders, a boss. It does not matter. A supervisor, an old friend. If you don't know how to forgive, your heavenly father is not going to forgive you. You have to make sure that you are not easily offended because those of us who have the word of God inside of us, we are not easily offended. What we do is take what offended us and take it into prayer. And then we use it as a weapon and we launch it out against the enemy. So if you don't have a prayer life, you're going to be easily defeated. So you better get you a prayer life, but you better make sure you have your heart right because whatever is in that heart, you're going to say it out of your mouth. And whatever you say out of your mouth, take on legs. Why? Because words are spirit and they are life. So you got to make sure if you want to hear God, you got to make sure that you're able to hear what he's saying about you. Before you go in there and pitch and tell God what somebody is doing to you, what somebody has said to you, what is going on and being offended by, I guarantee you the father going to start talking about you first. Why were you offended? <laughs> what, what is really bothering you about this? Oh, then he'll start giving you a set of instructions. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes they are not easy. Go to this one and say that. Go to this one and buy that. Go to this one and help that. And you'll be like, huh? And he said, but you said you wanted to hear my voice. You said you wanted to obey me. You say that you are submitted to me. You say that you love the truth. Then you got to obey me even when it hurts you to do it. You got to kill your flesh and still go and do it. Why? Because he shows you favor every time you obey him. So you can't be one that says I was in prayer and God started talking to me about such and such and what such and such did to me and what such and such said to me. No, he's going to start talking about you and your heart posture and what it looks like towards the person who actually did do something to you. Then he'll tell you to forgive. Then he'll tell you don't track the wrong no more. Then he'll even have the audacity to tell you you can't retaliate. Now that's the kind of God that we serve. See, you want to hear the voice? So when you find yourself retaliating, when you feel like you got to avenge yourself, when it seems like you got to protect yourself, what you told God is that you are your God, that you don't even trust him to even protect you in that moment. But when you in prayer and you hear God, he tells you to forgive. He tells you don't keep no track record because love keeps no track record of wrong. He starts to tell you how he's going to break your heart for the things of him. He starts to show you how to partner up with him and how to pray for the very thing that you believe is hurting you. Then he starts telling you things like love them, bless them. And even in the midst of persecution, you still need to pray for them and you still got to know that you're going to get a reward at the end and it's going to be joy. So if you don't know how to forgive your mama, your daddy, your peers, your boss, your old leaders, ministry leaders, it doesn't matter. Your siblings, your brother, sister, your ex-friend, your old lovers. If you don't know how to get that stuff out of your heart, I guarantee you, you really don't hear him at the frequency that you need to hear God from. All right, here we go. Uh, I want you to write down, answer prayers are your greatest reward. Is one of your greatest reward because Jesus himself is our seeding great reward, right? All right, go ahead. Let's go. I think this is my last one. Hearing the voice of God through Jesus. you got to hear him through Jesus. And the only way that you'll be able to hear him through Jesus is that you must study the lifestyle of Jesus, all right? You must study the lifestyle of Jesus. And then I want you to write down 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Ooh, it's 8.53. Let me hurry. Sorry, Tasha. All right, here we go. Scripture, we are writing about the word of life in him who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard, whom we have seen with our own eyes. See that, that relationship, that dynamic? who we heard, who we seen with our own eyes, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and have touched with our own hands too. And the life and aspect 
of his being was revealed, made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw an eyewitness and are testifying to and declare to you the life, the eternal life in him who already existed with the father and who actually was made visible, was revealed to us, his, follow his followers. You must have a relationship with God for yourself. You must study the life of Jesus, but you also need to be acquainted with your need of him and you got to build your relationship with him. You can't just keep getting stuck on my pastor said, my mother said, my grandmother said that. No. What did he say to you? You can't just go to church every Sunday and just live off everything your pastor said. Did you? Like in the book of Acts with the Bereans, go back and study what your pastor said by way of scripture. Because information without application or revelation without application is no revelation or information at all if you haven't made it applicable. You have to study. You need to be acquainted with him. You need to be acquainted with the word. So when you say God said, then you are assured that God told you. But if it's judged and it's a little off, then you got to be assured too that God sent someone to tell you that it's off. But you need to at least know that you heard something in that moment in regards to bringing a correction, alignment, or whatever have you. And I'm going to give you a quick story. When it was time for me, and this is no permission for you all to do this, when it was time for me to uh, leave my former church, I had to go on a year journey with God through prayer and fasting. I didn't have anywhere to go, but I started my process because I heard God say that I will send you to a place that they do not know your name. They do not know your gifts. Neither will they look like you. But when I send you to this place, if you obey me, I will accelerate you quickly. But you will have to leave a place whom you love what you love, people who know your name, know your gifts, but you will have to leave because you capped out here. You can no longer grow here. When I did say at that one year, at that one year period of time, and then I found the church I'm in today, when I said it was time for me to leave, many said, even prophets said it wasn't God. But because I went on a year journey with the father and I heard his voice on several times throughout one day fast, three day fast, 21 day fast, 30 days of fasting, repeat one day, three days, seven day, 21, I understood I became acquainted with his voice. And so when I heard that is not God, I knew that the father didn't send them. So you have to know within your knowing in your being you heard your set of instructions even put this down when others don't understand it so you have to get to a place that you know it and that you trust what god said to you so when others test it or try it or tell you that it's not god you got to make sure that that word has already been submitted to a group of people that you do trust to tell you the truth so when someone else comes along who only want to benefit from keeping you there, then you have to say, I know what God said to me. So you have to be careful that you don't get to a place that you offend God and say he didn't say it to you just to please a man. So you got to be careful in these hours. You need discernment. And then you need to ask, who sent you? Because did God send you or did the devil? And if I know God said a thing and that thing has been judged and I went through my processes, then I can't buy into what you saying to me that God didn't. And when I left all the persecution, all the false accusation, that's how I learned about the crushing, learning how to kill rebellion and pride and stubbornness and feeling like I need to avenge myself. I learned that in that place of prayer and still learning it to this day to hear God and say, shut your mouth. Don't say that. Don't avenge. Come off of Facebook for these many days until I can get your fingers in check, which lines up with your heart. I had to learn that because that keeps me out of trouble. It keeps me from regressing in time when I need to be here. But because I refuse to allow God to be God, then I am stuck in my past or I'm doing things, past behaviors that does not please the father so you got to get to a place that no matter what you know you heard god you submitted that word under authority and you got your answers so when the enemy
enemy shows up on the scene using an actual agent in the earth, you have to judge their motive too as well and say who sent you. But if you don't know the word, then you will go with every wind flow with any wind of doctrine just because you don't know him for yourself. You have to be well acquainted with the father. So that way, when it's tested, and I'm telling you, it will be tested. The greatest thing I could have did was obey God and transition and go into the next place where I am today. That caused God to accelerate me because I obey the voice of the Lord. The reason why many of us are in disobedience because we don't know the voice. We've been buying into the devil's uh, lies, all right? I also want you to put John 14, and this is my last one, I promise. John 14, 6 through 16 through 17. Okay, I promise. John 14, 16 through 17. We also hear by way of the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit, all right? And it says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. And he may remain with you forever, forever. All right. And it says in the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome or take to his heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you recognize him and for he lives with you constantly and will be in you forever. So you hear by way of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is your counselor, your helper, your comforter, your advocate. He's always on standby with an answer. He is the perfect leadership. He leads you. He guides you. He directs you. He talks to you. He lunges you into the deep. He teaches you the deeper things of God. Why? Because he's always in harmony with the father and the son, and he never does anything outside of their will. Your job is to obey the Holy Ghost inside of you, the Holy Spirit inside of you, and you pull from the wells that come from the Holy Spirit inside of you, your water, your well, it should be clean, it should be filtered out, and anything that's not like God, you say no other spirit will be able to control me, but the true and spirit, true and living spirit of God, no other spirit can control me, but the true and living spirit of God, no other spirit will be able to control me, but the true and living spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, spirit that dwells on the inside of me. And even for those of you who say there are times when I feel like I don't know what to pray, you better get filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in a new tongue, because even when you don't know what to pray, Romans 8, 26 tell you that yearnings and groanings come out of you. You travail until he gives you language on what to pray. And as an intercessor, as a believer, as a Christian, you never run out of words because the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. And and so the more word you have, the more power and the more authority you have and the more anointing you have to lift burdens and destroy yokes out of your off of your life. So every day you should say the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of me. No, I will never be comfortless. I got a comforter. No, I will never be helpless. I have a helper. Neither will I ever, ever feel like I'm not being protected. I have an advocate. I have one who consoles me. No, even in my weakness, he is still inside of me and he demonstrates his power. He strengthens me from the inside out. And when I need an answer, he's always on standby. He never runs out of an answer. And even when they get quiet, they already prepared me for the test. My job is to grab the answer and do what he told me to do. So you are not without a helper, a comforter. You are not without hearing the voice of God. You just have to teach yourself how to hear, and I guarantee you, you will go into the next season of your life well prepared. That's all I got for today. <laughs> Wowzers, you guys. Oh my goodness. Somebody is saying glory. <laughs> you guys feel the presence of God as she was teaching and the authority of the Lord as she was teaching us this evening. How many of you guys were impacted? Yes, I was going back and forth on the different pages where we were streaming. And it was just amazing seeing how people were impacted and how they were just like blown away. 
by the level of revelation that you were releasing. And just as you were teaching, even for me personally, what I got out of all of it is that you need to have your own relationship with the Lord. Yes. You need to activate the word that the Lord has given us, which is in his word, yes. and really just brought it back to us. Yes. Instead of blaming others or... Uh, You're accountable. You're accountable. At the end of the day, it's like we are accountable for our walk with the Lord and I like what you said too. You can't be saying that you hear the voice of God, but your life looks like hell. And I, we, I know we're coming into a time to where just as us as believers, just even with this generation, we're like, yo, y'all keep talking about Christ, but your life does not line up. And I believe that the Lord is raising up men and women that to where it's all cohesive. It's all aligned to where as they're preaching the gospel, their lives are also, um, you know, bearing fruit and all of that. So you guys, powerful teaching. You guys, you guys heard, you know, just an hour uh, from this powerhouse here, but she has a whole session within TOU. I believe it was about like five different teachings. And, uh, six, yeah. you guys. And we want to, uh, we want to give you all the opportunity to um, sign up for the one university. And we have some bonuses that we want to give you from Jamal and I, but uh, Prophetess Keisha has actually created a bonus just for you all this evening if you sign up to be a part of the One University. Prophetess Keisha, can you share it with the audience? So I will do a live webinar. I usually only offer it to my mentorship program students or mentees, and it's called the theme of your season. And so what I do is I teach people how to hear the voice of God in regards to getting the theme for your season. As you heard me say that God gave me expansion and great exposure, and it talked about enlargement, surplus, but it also talking about making my name great. No matter what smear has been on the name, God will make that name still great. And so what I do is I teach you how to get the theme, which is the topic or the story for that season of your life. Then I ask you to learn and teach your ear how to hear what scriptures is going to support it. From there, when the enemy comes in and counterattack it, then your job is to remind yourself and God what he said. So that way you will know how to get through that season and hear him for your next season because you're not going to be unprepared. So it'll be a 90, a 90 minute teaching. You get a lifetime replay and then you get the chance to do Q&A with me. So sometimes people don't want to do the Q&A during the live session, but you'll get my email address and be able to do a Q&A and I will answer your questions questions that way too as well. Also, one of the scriptures that I focus on when we are doing the get the theme of your season is Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through eight. And then I actually ask you, what season do you believe that you're in, but also hearing God on how to come out of that season. So that is going to be my offer for those who enroll in TOU the one university on tonight and then pastor jamal and natasha will submit your name to me and then from there i will create a date where i'll go ahead and teach train and activate you on here how to hear the voice of god even for your own season sometimes we can hear for other people but we get stuck when it's time to hear for ourselves and god will never ever have you without a theme or storyline for the season that you are in today. So don't just hear for someone else and then be stuck when it comes to you. That's All right. That, and that's so important, you guys. And I feel like a lot of us are walking around kind of wounded to where we feel like, and even some of us may even feel like, God, are you just using me for, you know, my gift and what I can give him? And no, he's a good father. He wants to also fill you up as you are pouring out. And Keisha has raised up um, many intercessors. Um, and has even just helped me in realizing, you know, my authority and even just my uniqueness in knowing that, you know, what God wants to speak to me personally. Yes. And probably just teaching, just with even kind of going into what you're teaching um, within the one university, how vital do you believe that, like, you know, prayer is? Not just personally, but really being developed in it. Um, with the community because even for you like you have a lot of mentees and just even with your mentorship program and what you do what are the benefits of learning how to pray within a community within a community um i always use the corporate prayer gathering yes. 
Yeah, I always use that because in corporate prayer, you learn how to not just because intercessors or prayer is not for the selfish, it's for the selfless. And when you learn how to come into a community, you uh, learn community, you learn about strength, you learn about support, but then you start to learn about yourself as well. And also we have to be, if you guys can put this in the chat for me, in prayer, prayer is the lifeline of God's church. It is your lifeline. Without having a prayer life is like you being a human being without oxygen. You really don't have a life. And so when you learn how to pray in a community, you get strength, you get support, you get that community, that sense of, hey, even this is a weak day for me. I have someone who can intercede and pray on my behalf even when I'm weak. I always tell people too, you need friendships. You need partnership. You need people that you can be transparent and the word transparent means you can see through me even if i haven't communicated in that moment people who have a genuine prayer life their discernment is so keen that they can sense when something is off about you you need those type of people in your community like teal you Tell you, I noticed that they are a very support group. They're very strong. I noticed that a lot of them are transparent, including on Facebook. When I go on the thread, I'll be like, whoa, wow, okay. But that brings level of freedom and it gives people who overcame or triumphed in those areas and got victory to share with you, hey, here is a strategy because intercessors, are they very strategic. They get points from God and then they get the strategy on how to target the very thing that's trying to kill them and so hey you go into TOU you get that community you get that support system you get the Q&A where you can ask your questions and get the answers when you take those courses I did the sixth module where I taught on prayer and how to hear the voice and the importance of even being in a corporate environment especially for those of us who go to church but we don't attend prayer environments like we don't go to the corporate prayer there's more power in numbers. That's why I believe you should be in the TOU because there's power in numbers and that's where your strength come in. That's where unity is. So I would say to you, get your prayer life. Without a prayer life, you don't really have a lifeline. You don't have oxygen. You're just a vessel that's walking around lifeless because you don't have a relationship with the father. And no wonder people are marrying the wrong people. People are connecting with the wrong people. No wonder we're into sexual sin, greed, don't know what career we should be in, wasting time in education in places where God didn't call us to. No wonder some of us are backslidden because we really just don't have that relationship and we don't have a community where I can say today I'm weak or today, hey, this is just not a great day. But I always tell people before they tell me that they're not having a great day, did you talk to God first because I don't want to become an idol and get in trouble with the father because you pursued me and not him. So that's what TOU would do for you. I it is God. God. <laughs> I'm the woman of God. I, to God. And I mean, I want to welcome in some amazing people that are deciding to join tonight. Probably thank you so much for endorsing. I love you. Salute in that, you know, just that extra mm. to TOU. Melissa, welcome. Gabriel, welcome. Gabrielle, Shirley, Tiffany, Philip. Um, Faith, Desiree, Tashia, Charlene, Lorna, um, Natasha, Bolechi, Mora, Keila, Kayla. Welcome to TL, you guys. We are so pumped. Okay. Uh, and so my biggest thing for you guys tonight is that you will continue on the journey. And not give up, not give it. Even if you can't do it to you tonight, we're going to give away even more content this week, guys. Yeah. Like we have Beth Tucker coming tomorrow, teaching class with you have. It's going to be Anna. Ash to you teach it on Wednesday, and we have Susie Mills teaching on Thursday. It's going to be an amazing week. But I am so honored to have our sister Candace off because she is such a heart steer person to us. Yeah. So we want you guys, we're not going to sit on this thing all night tonight because we got you guys. We want to make sure y'all know that this is such a, a huge opportunity for you to go to a new season of your life. But we want to give the opportunity we want everybody to follow you. We want them to go check your Facebook lines out, go check your website out, what you have coming up. If you guys are wanting to connect and get closer to what Tommy is doing, what can they do? Where can they go to find you, to follow you, like you, Instagram you, all the good stuff? All right. So my social media for Instagram, Periscope, YouTube, as well as Facebook is Keisha O. Cephas. 
And uh, Periscope is at Miss Cephas, M-S-C-E-P-H-U-S. Then on, um, I have for the new webinar that's coming out February 25th. It is 90 minutes and it is at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's called A Journey with God Through Prayer. And this is where I talk about what is prayer, what is an intercess intercessor, the attributes of a watchman, those who are of, of us who actually stand on our post in the watchtower and hear what God is saying and be able to discern his next move, but also learning how to overcome accusations. I think most people get taken out the moment that they get wounded because of the accuser of the brethren. They keep looking at people, but it's really the devil that is accusing them and just giving you some principles, a strategy on how to get through. So that webinar starts on February 25th. It's for four weeks, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can also go to YouTube and Periscope and Facebook and find a lot of videos on me teaching about soul issues. I believe before you do anything in the earth, you need to allow God to crush the enemies within your soul. And I always talking about reducing you to the lowest form of yourself that he may get the best of him out of you. So wow. I believe in soul before you get into ministry, marriage and all of that stuff, allow God to deal with the issues of your soul. So he can get the best out of you. And then you'll know how to be a good friend and a good wife and a good husband and a good boss and so forth. So go check me out at KeishaLCephas.com. You can find everything about my programs, okay? Please go check her out. Go follow her. Go support her, guys. We want you to do that. And then it's what you know that her bonus is limited time, all right? It's only available tonight. I literally just sit out like, hey, you want to bless the folks tonight? You got something you have to give tonight only, all right? Because we only going to be on the track for the period of time, all right? So you need to enroll in TOU, all right, tonight. And we'll be making sure you guys get that bonus and as well that you get everything else that comes along with enrolling in the first 12 hours of open enrollment, all right? Enrollment does close on Friday, so we got a little bit of time. But go ahead and rock and roll tonight, guys, and join us. So that's all we have. Um, Keisha, thank you so much. We love you so much. Thank and have a great you. See y'all tomorrow night again. All right, Papa. Love you. Have an amazing night. Thank you. You, you too. Bye, y'all.